Welcome, friends. I'm Christy Sutt Wagner, and I'm the executive director of Bright Stars of Bethlehem. At Bright Stars, our vision is that all of our Palestinian friends will flourish and have life abundantly. And we are the U.S. Uh, fundraising arm for uh, Dar al Khalima University of Arts and Culture, which is an amazing university, the first and only of its kind in all of Palestine. So we aspire at Bright Stars to unlock hope for the next generation of creative leaders in Palestine through our work. Of fundraising. So we've got an amazing, amazing webinar planned today, and I would like to let you know that if you have questions, go ahead and we've got the bottom Q&A button. So during our time today, go ahead and send up any questions, and at the end of our time, we'll have the Q&A section, and the panel will answer those questions, hopefully. So today we are focusing on Hope Unlocked through film, which is so incredible and so powerful. We've got a world-changing panel today. We're just thrilled to have the folks that are that are doing this today, and um, these are people that who are dedi they're dedicating their lives to telling stories that are that are um, powerful, and that uh, one story in particular is just a beautiful story that is has actually been catapult catapulted to the world stage um, in amazing ways. So we're going to talk about the film, uh, the present today. So uh, we're, I'm bringing. The first person on the panel, um, this is the gentleman who started it all. He is the person who is the co-founder of Bright Stars of Bethlehem, and he founded, Dar or he is the president and founder of Dar al Khalima University of Arts and Culture, and um, he's, he's joining us from Bethlehem. This is Reverend Dr. Mitri Rahab, the president, uh, again, president of DIK, a world changer, a pastor, a um, uh, somebody who is, is truly making a difference in the world. So welcome, Dr. Rahab. Thank you, Chris. And um, good evening or good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm so excited uh, to introduce to you uh, this panel, uh, amazing, amazing panel. Um, I would like to start with introducing uh, Farah Nabulsi. Uh, Farah in Arabic means joy, uh, and Farah is a joy uh, in the true sense of the word. Uh, she comes from Nablus, that's what her last name actually is. So she is a Palestinian uh, filmmaker, though born in London. Uh, her film, The Present, uh, won uh, the BAFTA uh, Award for Best Short Film, and her film also was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Life Action Short Film. Uh, it's really an honor uh, to have you with us, Farah, uh, on this panel. Uh, next, I would like to introduce uh, my good friend, uh, Mohanad uh, Malas, uh, born in Beirut. Uh, he is a very successful uh, businessman. Uh, but also a philanthropist. Um, I met um, Mohanad 2013 for the first time. And since then, uh, actually, we have been uh, uh, good friends. And um, also, Mohanad is an executive producer of several Palestinian films, including uh, The Present. Mohanad, uh, welcome and uh, good to see you with us on this panel. Thank you, Reverend. They're always a pleasure. Thank you, Reverend. Uh, next, I would like to introduce two of our graduates, uh, Noor Hodeli. Uh, Noor, by the way, means light. Uh, and she is a delight. Uh, uh, she uh, graduated in the first uh, cohort uh, of, of the film, uh, and actually she was on staff uh, with us for several years uh, in the media department, um, and now she is, she is working on, uh, on her own project, so Noor, uh, great to have you uh, with us. Thank you so much, thank you. Uh, last but not least, Saleh. Saleh means uh, the righteous person. Uh, and Saleh uh, is from Hebron, um, also a graduate of Dar al-Kalima. Uh, 
Um, actually, both Noor and uh, Saleh worked on the film The Present. Noor was the production manager and Saleh was the second assistant director. It's always great to see our graduates involved uh, in such uh, great uh, films. So welcome everyone and allow me to start with uh, Mohanad. Um, Mohammed, Mohammed, I think uh, the year 2013 uh, was a special year. Uh, this is where we met, but I guess the year has something also to do with the present. Um, Absolutely. So could you share with us, uh, please, the, the backstory of, of the film? Well, I, I like how uh, Chris introduced you as being uh, a world-changing uh, personality. And no doubt you were, at least in, in my life and in the connection that you created. So it was a business trip that myself and Farah and uh, about 50 other people had made to Palestine. It was a, a fact-finding, kind of going in, seeing Palestine. Actually, it was titled Live Palestine. So it, we had this uh, five-day event where we would go and visit various places and have various experiences. And the one that was life-changing was the one that we were told that we have to be there at 5 a.m. to visit uh, the Christmas church. And we weren't sure why would we have to be that early. Uh, and sure enough, uh, walking down the, the streets of Bethlehem at sunrise, watching the churches and the mosque and the synagogue. I mean, it was such a spiritual experience that I'll never forget. But uh, what added amazing color is to recognize and walk into your church and then going through you know, stooping down to go down these stairs and then you walk into this amazing, you know, thousands or thousands of years old cave that you've transformed into this amazing place where we served us about 20 of us, this amazing breakfast, this culinary food kept coming. That's when we realized that you having come after graduating from Germany about uh, 30, 35 years ago, that you've actually created a Sunday school uh, for the kids that uh, get them off the streets and this year in, year out, have turned to become a university at Dar al Kalama, where you're graduating artists in, in film, in media. And I know I got to experience the culinary uh, experience you gave us from those students. So, you know, and I got a chance to, to get to know you over the years. We hosted dancers from Palestine, the students. So, but more importantly, that's where I met uh, Farah. And Farah was, uh, uh, it was her first trip after some time to the area. And it was very moving to her. And, and uh, uh, when she came, uh, we discussed, I've seen some of her films. We would like, after the trip, we would all go to our, uh, the day events, we would go to our room to sleep. And I understand from Farah's husband, she would go to bed in tears, getting out her journal and actually writing emotionally what she felt. And those she has translated into her three films that she had produced prior to this BAFTA winning film, The, the Present. So to me, meeting Farah and, and getting to know her, and when she came and she was exploring, financing this new film that she was doing, I was so happy to be part of the group that supported her effort. You're on mute, Reverend. Yeah. Uh, Mohanad, I know you are, uh, actually you have supported uh, many films um, and um, this like seems to be a passion uh, for you. Uh, I don't think this is, uh, it's not like a business, but I think it's a passion. No, uh, for sure. I think, you know, when you care for the Palestinian cause and you, actually in general for, for social justice causes, that's what I've been finding is important. And again, I find that it's the artists that make the difference. I mean, it, it's a link, right? It's a chain. You need the director, the producer, I mean, the script writer, it's a whole team, but you also need a producer, somebody that come in, an executive producer that is the, the exact producer has nothing to do with the art. You just basically are able to support the cause. And, and without that chain, many scripts sometimes remain in drawers unproduced. So I feel it's important to support causes of, of social justice and it's a pleasure to meet, you know, someone like Farah, who's been a life-changing experience for me, for sure. Uh, you know, Mohanad, I can say that uh, for me, you are the role model uh, of what actually uh, an Arab person in the U.S. 
can do, uh, getting engaged in the American society, understanding the culture, um, uh, very successful businessman, but also a phil philanthropist who actually sits on several boards, uh, take time to give back to the community. Uh, and uh, I wish, I think if we have like uh, 50 people like you, uh, the, the world will be a different place. Thank you, Reverend. You're so kind. Appreciate your comments. Thank you, sir. Uh, but um, maybe one last question. Uh, uh, what do you think is your goal? Uh, when, when do you think is a film really successful? Look, I mean, <laughs> Farah have shown us that no, I've, I've done about 10 films or so, but Farah has shown us that when you have the talent that she has and the ability that she has, this, this, this is success. I mean, the definition of success is when you recognize and win a BAFTA and get a, a nomination for an Oscar, what, what it could be more. But clearly to us, it's not just those. It's the fact that the film is being talked about, it's being discussed. Uh, you know, the ex-CIA director put an article in New York Times saying, Mr. President, you should watch this Palestinian movie. It, it's the year it started the discussion at a time when we had the assault on Gaza, at a time when the Human Rights Watch report came out, uh, stating that this is, this is actually what is happening is apartheid. And also confirmed by the Israeli Beth Salem uh, organization. So... It's, it's when you're part of that movement that starts something, the conversation, and as Farah always said, you can do all kinds of statistics and I can give you all kinds of reports, but it's when you touch the people's hearts and minds with films like these, it's what makes a difference. It's the personal story that touches the heart. And Farah has been amazing at doing that. Thank you, Mohanad. And I think uh, this is the time uh, to hear from Farah. Um, it's, uh, I think Farah, everyone um, on this webinar is excited to hear from you. Uh, and I wonder if the year 2013 uh, was somehow important for you uh, to thinking of this film. Was it at that time or was it later? Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, well, in answer to your question, no, the present uh, as a story was not born in 2013. Um, as Mahan had mentioned, uh, that initial trip, and for me, it was actually longer than the five days. Uh, my husband and I had extended our time there much longer, actually. Um, and throughout my entire trip, which was my first trip to Palestine as an adult. So in over 25 years, I had not being to my blood country, um, and I'm 100% Arab Palestinian. And so for me, uh, those initial writings that Mohammed mentioned that were personal and, and self-therapeutic were the first few films when I chose to become a filmmaker a few years later, uh, the films that I'd adapted. Um, I'd adapted from that writing and I produced. The present came after a number of trips. So I started to go back and forth. And, um, and I was already in the film industry, if you like, I was already making films. Um, I hadn't directed. So the present was my directorial debut. Um, but the story itself was inspired during those trips from every single time I found myself at an Israeli checkpoint. Uh, and from every single observation of watching hundreds of Palestinians at Israeli checkpoints, of which there's over a hundred all over the West Bank, as you know, and another hundred or so flying checkpoints that can appear anytime, anywhere. And I found myself at many of those many times and having conversations with Palestinians about these humiliating, frustrating checkpoints that are part of the daily life of so, so many. But the real seed for the story was a conversation I had actually. Uh, uh, Saleh, you, you're from uh, Hebron, Khalil, um, a young man who lives in that area who I would visit every time I would go to Palestine actually. And on one of those trips, we were standing on one side of a checkpoint that's around 100 meters from his home. 
And it's similar to the one in the film. It has a turnstile, it has a metal detector because all the checkpoints are very different. Same uh, materials, but you know, different, different looks. And so, yep, you can see in this picture, the, 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 the checkpoint that we fabricated. So there's a, a, a metal detector and a, and a turnstile. And we were standing there and I said to him, what if you needed to bring a new couch home to your house? And he looked at me and he said, Farah, if it doesn't fit, it doesn't go. I mean, technically you can ask for permission, but these checkpoints aren't here to serve us, to help us, to protect us. They are here to make our lives miserable, to, to, to cause those frustrations, to cause us to want to move away from our homes and into the city centers and leave our land. Um, and uh, so that's where the story was born, where the conversation got even more convoluted. I mean, I said to him, okay, what if it was a hammer and you needed to do some DIY at home? That fits. And he's like, do, do you want to get me shot? Do you want to get me arrested? You know, so it was so absurd. It was so absurd. And, um, and that's where the seed for this specific story was born. And, you know, at some point I had to decide, I wanted to direct, uh, but uh, I, I guess I had a bit of imposter syndrome initially. And I thought if I was ever going to direct my first film, this had to be it because I could see very, very clearly, very vividly in my mind's eye, the entire world of the film. Um, and, and that was it. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's such a moving uh, film that really speaks to the heart but also it addresses really uh, human rights issue. Uh, and I know you are, um, I mean, uh, a vivid fighter for human rights. Uh, maybe, you know, it would be good to hear from you about this, the relationship you see between filmmaking and human rights advocacy. Certainly, I mean, at the end of the day, you can choose to make film and art for the sake of it, sure. And, and, and you know, that's, that's totally fine, but you can also choose to be a purpose-driven filmmaker or artist. You can choose that, you know, as a filmmaker, I, I was not interested personally uh, in making art film for the sake of just entertainment, for example. Um, I wanted to work on things that were, you know, had, had its depth and authenticity and told these human stories in, in a creative way. Um, so for me, film was a means of also engaging and, and starting conversations and encouraging contemplation and further, further investigation, if you like, and, and research for those who may watch any of my films. Um, and I think it offers a really powerful inroad, if you like, to, to the narrative, uh, to the human rights, to the, to the reality. I mean, this is a fiction film, right? But it is based on reality, on truth. I mean, thus the name, the present, the gift and the present time. Um, and so I think that, that art offers that inroad. And for me, that's what I was interested in, to be honest, both expressing myself creatively, but also using the power of art and film to, to, to present the, 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 the humanity and the human rights of, of Palestinian people. Uh, I'm not sure if you are the one who crafted uh, the word uh, artistic advocacy. But uh, when I heard you uh, say that the first time, uh, I immediately made the connection to what we call creative resistance. You know, all our uh, students, we like always uh, to encourage them to think creatively uh, uh, how to resist through the art. And um, I'm not sure, uh, did you craft that? I, I love it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I really don't think I did. I mean, I, I'm 100% sh sure it's been used before. However, um, I, I did come up with it myself, but I know definitely it's been used, no doubt, because I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely, look, 
theater of resistance, film of resistance, artistic advocacy has been used for, for decades. So it's definitely been used. But what I, I did conclude was that artistic advocacy, I think is the most powerful, most important means of advocacy because it opens the way for all other forms of advocacy to be more effectively received. If we go back to this idea of, of when Mahanad was mentioning what I, I, I often say about art is that art is the means of speaking to people's hearts. And that is the way you can access people's minds ultimately. That is the way that people will take action um, and with you, for you, alongside you. Um, and so unless you've spoken to people's hearts, you can't access their minds. And so you can have all those facts and figures and truths and proofs and maps and international law and UN resolutions and, and on and on and on. And it won't really make a difference. And studies have shown that because ultimately, unless people feel with you, unless there is empathy with the oppressed, then people will not take action for and with the oppressed um, and move away even from their own opinions perhaps or their misperceptions. Um, but yeah, so, so I, I didn't coin it, I'm sure. And if you think of apartheid South Africa um, where theater of resistance really played such a huge role, all we're, all we're at now is with film. It's almost like, you know, film of resistance if you like, um, but uh, it's been used, I think, since a long time. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking of the New York article uh, that really uh, advocated for President Biden uh, to see this one film to understand what's going on. Uh, how did you <laughs> feel about this article? What, what did you think about it? Well, let me give everyone a bit of context in case they're not aware of it. So it was a few days after the Oscars and I started getting messages going, did you, did you just see the opinion piece in the New York Times? Which I hadn't, <laughs> so my, imagine my surprise. Um, so what it was, was that um, John Brennan, the former CIA director of the USA, um, had, had penned an opinion piece and the New York Times published it in print an entire page, as well as online. And it had a big picture of Yasmin at the top, um, Yasmin from the film. And the headline was why Joe Biden must watch this Palestinian movie. And then about a week later as well, um, I started getting messages. Um, Are you watching CNN? Christiane and Amanpour was interviewing John Brennan and they talked about China, Mexico, and this Palestinian movie called The Present. And he was naming Yasmin by name. And what was interesting to me is the, the Human Rights Watch um, report had also come out, uh, you know, finally confirming what Palestinians have been saying for a very long time, including the Bit Salim report um, and Ben White's book, Israeli Apartheid of 2008, um, that, Palis that, that Israel is a, an apartheid state. But that's not what he was mentioning on, on TV and in his opinion piece. And so for me, this was that beautiful moment. And I'm no fan of John Brennan, to be honest, but it was this very powerful moment of art, film, having somehow um, been the conduit, I guess, for someone in public policy, in government, to feel compelled to write a piece talking about how Palestinians and Palestinian youth aspire for their freedom. And it's been a long time coming and that the status quo cannot persist. And, and so it was this perfect moment of what it was I've been doing for the last couple of years being confirmed in many ways that you can speak to public opinion that can influence public policy from the grassroots up using the power of art, using the power of film. And so that for me was a, a glorious moment, actually a beautiful moment. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, as somebody who really runs a college uh, where we started the first uh, film degree in Palestine, and so far it's also the only one, uh, I have been watching the development of Palestinian films over the last like two, three decades. Uh, and I feel now that we are at a point uh, that we need really to get the story out more and more through films. Uh, we need funding for that, sure. Um, but I feel that uh, uh, 
Uh, our story is getting now more and more recognized through these artistic uh, channels that, that you called. Uh, and I think the present was maybe, I hope, like the tipping point. Uh, because Palestine has so many stories. I mean, on every corner, there is a story uh, that just is waiting to be told, is waiting for a creative uh, director like Farah uh, to take on this, uh, uh, this uh, task. Uh, somebody like Mohanad to put the needed, uh, you know, uh, funds for it. And so that we can tell the story. Uh, can you see this development? Did you? Uh... Well, first, just speaking to your point about, you know, um, stories. And I, I really do want to like hit that home that ultimately, in many ways, the Palestinian narrative has been severely hijacked. And we really, really need to be telling our stories and more than ever. And the power of film, I mean, really is the most powerful means of meaningful human communication the world has ever known. Um, that really does transcend borders and tear down stereotypes and overcome misconceptions and misperceptions. And stories are the currency of life. And everybody loves stories. It's why we go on social media and we, 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 we love films and good books and, and so on. Um, and with film, there really is no limit to the stories you can tell or the ways you can tell them. So for me, I think it's one of the most important elements, if not the most important elements in the world of art. And in, as I mentioned earlier, the sort of conduit to other forms of advocacy and getting people to take action. Now, of course, funding. I mean, this is, this is the, the bane of every filmmaker's life put Palestine aside, every filmmaker's life. And so when it's Palestinians or Palestinians making films in Palestine and, and, and Pal Palestine films, the handicap is even worse in the sense that we're, we're dealing on the ground with so much, so much, and we don't have the, the film industry that so many other countries have and the support, whether it's government money or, you know, just the landscape, just the logistical landscape to be able to, 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 to make films in the way that maybe others do around the world. So I think we've done really well actually over the decades considering the, the realities on the ground and in the funding arena um, in Palestine. There have been some interesting developments like you know, the sort of co-production agreements like between the UK, Britain and Palestine, for example. I do think that film funds around the world um, have been open and, and generous and involved in that sense, and they've welcomed Palestinian narratives. So I think in the bigger scheme of things, we've actually done super well against the odds, if you like. Um, uh, at the same time, um, I think it's about time we have a private center sector um, film fund, to be honest. So if the public sector can't do it, and no doubt they're not able to, um, and it's not necessarily considered for them a priority, um, I really do think it's about time to have a private sector um, film fund. And it does not have to mean privately funded from within Palestine. Of course, any involvement contribution would be helpful and useful. But I do think that there is a lot of people outside of Palestine who are Palestinian, non-Palestinian, who could come together and, and create that. And I, I personally have been quite vocal about that recently um, in private circles. So um, I don't know if, wh where that will go, uh, but it seems to be a feeling and that's something I certainly advocate for. And I hope we'll get to a place where that's the case because it's such a shame that so much of the struggle is the funding. We have the stories, like you said, I mean, and the beautiful, powerful thing is we have the truth, we have right, we have international law, we have um, stories that are, I mean, you, you couldn't make them up even if you wanted to almost. I mean, true stories that can be fictional, 
documentary, of course, uh, short form, long form. It's all there. It's just a matter of, yes, we need to be able to fund. And of course, on the ground, having the talent, the teams, which Dara Kalima, honestly, I mean, you know, as a filmmaker, how could I be on the ground and in a budget be able to carry out a film if I'm having to fly everybody over as a team? So really being able to, to, to have the graduates of Dar al Kalima are also priceless in this process, especially if we're considering sort of budgets and, 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 and the economies of filmmaking. We want talent on the ground um, to work with us and to benefit with us. I mean, it's, it's, it, the, the money should come into Palestine to make films on the ground in Palestine, ideally. Um, not only does that invest in the economy, but also in the creatives and, and the culture. And the, so it's yeah, very important. Um, Farah, I think we can listen to you uh, for hours and hours. <laughs> you are a powerful storyteller. Uh, just one short, uh, very short uh, question. Um, you worked with two of our graduates, Noor and Saleh. So how did they do? I mean, Noor and Saleh, please don't listen now, okay? <laughs> well, um, look, I mean, Noor, of course, she graduated, like you said, she was with your first cohort. So she, she's, you know, she's been at it for a while and, uh, and full of energy. This lady, I, I personally think she should run for mayor of Bethlehem. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and, and, you know, no is not an answer for her. So she won't take no as an answer. If she, if, if, if you need something done, she's gonna find a way. And, uh, and that's really, uh, you know, something. And, and I'll even at one point, it was, where are we going to put this checkpoint that we're trying to build? And she's like, right, let's make some phone calls. And it ended up, of course, in a relative, in a car park of a church. I mean, can you imagine? She, <laughs> you know, um, even when there was a location I actually wanted, which was in areas B and C, you know, she was trying to figure out ways to get it. But we were like, no, let's be let's be a bit logical and, and you know, stay away from trouble and stick to A. But she was like, we're going to find a way. So, you know, uh, really run for mayor, Noor. <laughs> um, and, uh, and Salah, you know, I, I see him as a as a dark knight, and by dark knight I mean in the shadows. He was he was a much more recent graduate, or if I'm not mistaken, maybe even still with the with the with the with the university at the time. And he was one of those people who never complained, never uh, wanted the recognition, never was, you know, loud and 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 he he was so quiet and yet so involved, so helpful. So going and coming, it was like, we need this. Oh, yeah, Salah, we need that, Salah. And just a go-to person who, I mean, in film, when you start, everyone knows this, on a set, you got to be willing to do anything, anywhere. And he would just go, go, go. And I don't know if he remembers this, Salah, but, you know, us, uh, I even got involved with stopping traffic at one point. <laughs> but he was out there stopping the traffic, and I don't know what. So... Honestly, I was very appreciative of, of, of both of them, of the entire team, of course, um, who were involved and, and uh, but they did great. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Farah. Uh, really, we are proud of our graduates. Uh, they are really our pride. And uh, Noor, uh, Saleh, uh, so how did you feel working with uh, someone amazing like Farah? I just wait, wait, I'm going to say something. <laughs> Put me back on. <laughs> Start my video. Um, I, just to be clear, you know, um, this was the first film I was directing. So in many ways, this was a team that also took a chance on me. So it wasn't that they knew, you know, what was coming with the present, just to be clear. You know, now that you can ask them how it was working with me, sure. And, you know, but just, I want to give context here. And especially also when it comes to Saleh Bakri, the, the lead actor as well. He's a very seasoned actor. He took a chance on me in that sense. And this was me coming for the first time to a set to actually direct. So just giving context uh, so that whatever Noor says, <laughs> Saleh says, <laughs> it has a bit of context. So uh, Noor, would you like to start maybe? A first call I got from, hi everyone, first of all. 
Uh, first call I got from Osama Bawardi, the one who told me about the movie, and uh, he put me in contact with Farah. I was said, okay, it's a short movie. Uh, before I start doing my research, location, actors, and everything with Farah, I have Googled Farah before, and I was amazed of what she have done before. Uh, Farah, it was nice meeting and working with you. You were such a ball of energy, not only me. Noor, I want this. It will happen. Farah, maybe she's not aware of what, um, of what contradictions we have here in Palestine. Uh, it's not easy to be filming in the street without everything going all around in one package. Uh, what Farah asked for, it was like, okay, we can do it, we can do it. I was like, okay, in 18 days only? No, no, in 10 days. It was like 12 days or 11 days before first. And I had only one month to prepare and uh, uh, like 12 days filming or 11 day filming. But uh, it happened, it happened. And Farah was always texting me, is this okay? We have a voice on the set, please. We need to set, to set it, to be on silent. Once uh, one of the stories that happens with me that was a, a wedding party there. And I have to go there to the family and tell them that we have, we have filming. Can we please stop the music for like uh, one hour so we can continue filming? <laughs> Yes, um, it was pleasure working with Farah. I, I have seen the success before we finished up and we wrapped the whole movie together. And um, there was a difficult time filming, especially when we chose the location of the checkpoints. Do you remember Farah? And uh, the whole location has no electricity. And I have to manage how can I get electricity to the set? I called the electricity company, Jerusalem Electricity Company, so they can support me with electricity there on the spot. It was like, oh my God, I need an electricity. I'm not gonna put any generator with, um... yes, here <laughs> in this picture. Yes, and I need an electricity for filming, for charging cam batteries for the cameras. We need the lighting. So I had to call the electricity company, Jerusalem electricity company to the set so I can film and continue filming. Yes, and uh, the whole location is the sea area, Reverend Mitri. So I needed to have um, permission from the government, from the police here. And they were with me on the spot, on the set all the time. They didn't leave us, the police, the Palestinian police. And I closed the whole road. It was a main road between Al Khadr and uh, Bejal and Bet Saur. Uh, yes, it was it was hard taking care of these people on the set as well. I uh, hope that uh, yes, I hope that I made I, I did a good job. Thank you uh, so much. Thank you, Noor. I mean, uh, I think for our viewers, you see uh, and you meet tonight the. Uh, powerful Palestinian woman, uh, I mean, Farah uh, and Noor. Uh, Saleh, how was your experience to be, uh, to have that chance to work with, with Farah on such an amazing film and then to, to hear that this film is nominated for the Academy Award? Yeah, first of all, uh, hello for everyone. Um, uh, my experience with Farah was a great experience. First, I can say, that I was not very involved with Farah, more I was with the first assistant director, uh, Fuad, in the year. And, but I need to learn from Farah because she was the director. So always my eyes was on her, how she work and what she do and about everything she do in the set. Farah was always focused with the cameraman, with the actors, you know, on the details with everyone about the clothes, the set, the light, the, the people, even she cares about the crew, what, what they eat and what they are doing. So uh, I think Farah, if she said her first experience, but I think, uh, I think she's amazing and she's a very professional person and she's very kind and nice person was with everyone. Uh, my experience with the film was really, really great experience because, you know, uh, 
we can say the second time I see this very big equipment, this uh, huge camera and lens and, you know, uh, this great crew who work every time, 24 hours, you know, to, to make the work done. And we have to be a team, you know, working as a team, it's not easy with everyone because we have different people from different areas in Palestine. And moreover, there was many students, not only me and Farah from Dar al there was like seven uh, or eight students from Dar al -Kalime. Like Noreen, she was assistant uh, cameraman, second assistant cameraman, right. Salah, many, many students, they were drowsy, many students were studied in Dar al -Kalime, worked in the film. And, uh, you know, it was amazing experience. And uh, I think Farah, she's, uh, uh, I want her to come back here and work more films and working with her. Great. Uh, Noor and uh, Saleh, do you think that uh, Dar al Kalima uh, was able to equip you uh, with the know how, with the needed skills, with the knowledge uh, to? you know, to be thrown into such, uh, you know, a project and you will not uh, like uh, sink, but you will prove yourself. Start with me or with the uh, uh Please start Saleh, yeah, go, go ahead. Uh, if I wanna talk about the Dar al there's a lot of many things that I can say, you know, first I studied diploma for two years since 2012 until 2014. And I studied baccalaureate degree uh, um, from 2014 until 2018. So I graduated in 2018. Farah, uh, Dar Karma gave us, I can say, everything. You know, at least hope to study film because it was my dream when I was young to study film because my family worked in press and media, in journalists. So my dream was to work in film because I saw people come to Hebron and different city and went. I go with my father because he was translator, German translator. So I saw people since I was young working film. So my dream was to uh, study uh, films and Dar Kalima gave me this chance. So, and not only gave us chance, she gave us a great teachers like uh, the, Mr. Saad Amdouni, uh, many teachers, Rama Mar'i, like amazing teachers who give us everything to learn not only with the equipment, because uh, I, as I remember in 2012, there was not many equipment, like uh, uh, small equipment, uh, we can say normal equipment for documentary. But after that, they, they start to give us always like new equipment, new equipment to learn. And this was amazing. And, you know, it, it was like help us to be ready to work on films. As well, uh, they give us chance to travel and they give us a chance to, to show our films to the world. Like I went to, to Jordan, to, uh, to Sweden with Dar al Kalima to, to uh, different festivals. They show, us, uh, they show our films in uh, different places in Palestine, in different universities. Like we went to tour for 10 universities in Palestine to show our films and discuss it with the student. And this was really amazing and taught us to help us to, to, to learn how to talk about films, how to express ourselves. Um, because Dar Kalma not only teach us, you know, how to make film, they teach us history about Palestine. They teach us, you know, uh, psychology, anthropology, uh, history, uh, English. Yes, they, they prove- your, your English is great, uh, uh, Saleh. Um, maybe, uh, Noor, would you like to say a few words about that? We, we, we are running out of time, but please, Noor. Uh, my experience with Dar al-Kalimi College was a very different experience from the other students because I'm one of the first graduates group for Dar al-Kalimi. And I have started with them with the A-level from the first beginning. And I see that uh, they gave me the experience by working at the media center as well with a very good team. And I had the best experience with the, the rest of the crew there. And um, yes, they prepared me very well with the high standards of experience of how to teach people, how to lead the production, how to be on the set ready with all the, with all the other team uh, actually. And I have seen, I, I, I should say that I have worked since 2006 until 2010 
this experience that made me more stronger uh, with the whole uh, in the market of the media filming market, especially. And uh, when I say that I have the experience working at Dar al Kalimi as a film producer and a film production manager, I can say that it's, um, it's a reward for me. So a reward for me is an price that I have started there with the first college that teach cinema in the whole Middle East. Actually. And uh, yes, uh, I'm prepared. I'm very well prepared, especially with you, Dr. Reverend Smithy, because we have worked together in parallel filming and making a TV show and films together. So yes, thank you so much. Yeah. No, uh, we, are, we are proud of you, both of you. Uh, and I think thank everyone you. on this webinar would like to know What's next for you? Do you have, what is your next project? Do you have a film in mind you are working on or what is maybe one film that you did and you are proud of it? Uh, what, what is your hope for the future? Uh, let's start maybe with Noor first and then we go to Saleh. Uh, I love this picture. Me and Saleh were filming something about uh, people with disability, they were, participating in the marathon in Baton Basel. Um, I have a very nice documentary that I have made at Dar al Kalimi College. It speaks about my twin sisters, the relation that was started, that was so strong and we were separated because she started to study in Italy and then she moved to Mexico City. And they have been here establishing myself and my career. Yes, and now I'm uh, participating in one of the movies with Moya Dalayan with the films. He will be filming soon, as I guess, and I will be participating as a production manager on the set with him uh, in a few, in uh, maybe in a few months. It will be next month again, as I guess. And I'm very proud of myself that I've been working with Farah as well. And thank you so much for letting me speak here. Thank you. Uh, Saleh, what, what's next for you, your dreams? Yeah, well, what's next for my dreams? First, I, I want to share my, uh, the films that I made with Dar Karim. Uh, I made a film about the Palestinian uh, neighborhood in Hebron, who Farah visited uh, actually, uh, with called Shadda Street. Uh, they have a checkpoint, you know, they, they have need to pass. And I made a documentary about the, the area about the people who live there and uh, I was very proud you know because it was I can say my first film I traveled with around different places and uh, my next uh, project I think uh, I have no plans now for uh, yani, uh, I have plans in my mind for films but inshallah and soon I will be ready to share it and about my dream yeah, this is the next question. Yeah, about my dream. My dream is to, uh, you know, continue my studying master in film uh, in Europe. And uh, I wish I will find soon a scholarship study. Thank you, Saleh. Uh, uh, and I think now we are going to bring everyone back for the Q&A. We are, I know, running out of time. Uh, but let's take maybe five more minutes before we conclude. Uh, let me see if we have some questions. Uh, um, there is like, people are wondering if any major television network have picked up the film, like Netflix, etc. And I know Farah, you can speak to that. Yeah, no, it has very much so. So uh, in terms of, it's, it's on Netflix worldwide. So I know a lot of people on this call are in the USA. So you can watch it on Netflix in the USA as well. So that's great. Um, it, Vimeo Prime, um, oh, sorry, uh, Amazon Prime as well, depending on, on where. Um, Vimeo On Demand, again, depends on where. Uh, iTunes as well depends on where. Um, and then various TV channels like Canal, Canal Plus, uh, Telefonica, um, there's a couple of others I can't think of right now. So it's available, it's available worldwide. Uh, we have another, it's, it's not, not a question, but I think it's a, it's a very important uh, comment uh, saying uh, many films are too long to view together 
uh, with with the group uh, and then discuss them. But a film like The Present is ideal for reviewing and discussing in an evening, one and a half hours. Uh, can we have more short films? He's asking. <laughs> Uh, look, I mean, for me, this this was my fourth short film, um, and I love the short form. I think there's it's growing. I think that there's a lot of power in short films, especially when they're very well made. Um, personally, I'm not working on a short now. I am working on long form, but uh, but I'm sure there are plenty of filmmakers who are working on their short forms um, on the Palestinian narrative. I do have other ideas for short form as well, but you know, you go where your creativity takes you and where you feel called and, and what's next. So, but I agree. I think, I think there's a lot to be said for short films. Uh, another question, maybe this is for Mohanad now. The funding is key. Any specific recommendation on this issue which could get us somewhere? Uh, Certainly, look, uh, I'm involved in real estate and I very often find that uh, funds in real estate are difficult to raise funds for. But if you have projects, people go after the projects. Once you see, and I think Farah has has uh, the track record that she has. She's a, an Oscar-nominated film, a BAFTA winner. So when Farah comes up with a film, I think that's what drives many people. People want to be part of a successful project. I want to be part of that movement. So I think it's the key. I'd love if Farah is successful in, in creating the fund. I think it'd be amazing, but very often people shy away from just putting money away. They'd rather do project specific. So I find that that would be uh, the way to go. But I, I just want to add a comment because I think something that moved me, I mean, look, there's a lot of films that we see about the Holocaust, films that were filmed in Germany and Poland and, and tell the horrible events of the Holocaust. And that story has been told. The one thing that has moved me a lot is when when we see the the the... Uh, demonstrations happening right now in Israel, where you see many Jewish people standing side by side with Palestinians. And when you ask them, why are you doing this? And they, they, I was so moved by saying, look, my parents, they would say my parents are Holocaust survivors and they were saved by people of conscience. And I feel that I have to do the same because that is not correct. That is not just. So, so I think there's hope. And I think the more we tell the stories, powerful stories, funding will come. Um, yeah, thank you, Mohanad. Um, I think I have many questions, uh, the same question by many several people. Are you aware uh, if President Biden watched the film uh, and then they say one film by another graduate was watched by the German uh, president Steinmeier and the board of the World Bank, so it reached there. Any idea if if Biden? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let me just call him. <laughs> um, no, I don't know, but I think when you know you have a CIA director in the New York Times suggesting a president watch a film, uh, maybe he did, uh, or certainly the people around him. You're going to assume. I mean, they're not going to just disregard that in that sense, but. Um, I don't know is the answer, um, but I mean, it was, it's been, you know, this film has been lots of public figures, um, whether it's musicians, models, celebrities, um, actors. Um, it was even brought up in the houses of parliament in the UK. Um, so I think it's traveled pretty, pretty wide and far, uh, far and wide. And um, I, you know, I won't say who, but I've even received letters from, um, political individuals ar around the world and non-Arab, non-Palestinian congratulating me. Um, so it, it's definitely got beyond sort of, let's just say, cine cinema files, if you like. Um, it's uh, and if I may add, uh, just yes. along those lines, maybe not President Biden, but certainly several members of Congress, there was the Betty McCollum bill that is now mm. out there and it's getting, you know, now I think we're up to 27, 28 supporters. And I know many of those have watched the film and felt its impact and exactly what Farah was saying. It touched the heart and the mind beyond the statistics. So hopefully it is it's it is having its impact. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I think uh, I agree with you. And uh, thank you, Farah. Thank you, Mohammed, for making this, uh, you know, possible. 
uh, and for making this film. Uh, thank you, uh, Noor and Saleh, uh, for being such uh, great uh, graduates that make us proud. I'm glad to see that uh, seven, eight of our graduate works on this film. We couldn't get everyone on this webinar tonight. Um, but this is, I think, what Dal Kelima is, uh, really providing the next generation of creative leaders for Palestine. This is our mission statement, and I'm glad to see it is working, and it has worked with this film. And with this, I give the uh, now the mic to Chris. Chris? Thank you, everybody. Wow. I, all I have to say is a profound thank you to each of our panelists. I, I think you truly embody Hope Unlocked in Palestine. So thank you for your time with us today. You know, I got a chance to talk to uh, Noor and Salah. Uh, yesterday, we had a long talk, and one of the things that they talked about was they helped me to understand the difficulties of living out their dream as um, in the film industry because of the financial challenges, as we've spoken about a little bit. But Mitri, my, the final question here is to you. Can you help us understand, given all the challenges in Palestine with the, of course, with the current and recent uh, pandemic uh, complications with Delta, the occupation, you've coined the term the double lockdown. But not, and also the recent crisis, um, not only in the West Bank, but in Gaza. What, what is the impact financially on Dar al Kalama uh, in terms of, and what are our financial needs as we're trying to come alongside of you? And everybody on this um, webinar has a heart to help. What, what are the financial challenges right now? I mean, you know, Bethlehem uh, uh, has been going through very tough times because, uh, you know, Bethlehem depends on tourism. And since March 2020, there hasn't been one single group in Bethlehem. So basically, you have 70% of the economy is basically not working and people without income, which affects, you know, the collection of fees, but also it affects our ability. I mean, we heard it from Saleh, we need always like new equipment, etc. This is not easy to keep up with. Uh, if you are living, you know, with all these constraints, I think Farah talked about the constraints of filming uh, in locations uh, under all of these circumstances. But, you know, to run a university under these circumstances, you need to be an artist, actually, uh, to manage. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, um, uh, support is really needed to continue to keep upgrading, especially that we hope that in the coming weeks, uh, we will be upgraded uh, to a full-fledged university. Uh, I think this will happen in July in this month. And this, we need, you know, to take it to the, to the next level. Tomorrow we have 142 uh, uh, young uh, people graduating. Uh, and so it will be a great uh, event. So keep also, following us uh, on social media. Thanks, Mitri. You know, we uh, talked a couple of weeks ago about the need for $125,000. And we've been advertising that, talking, uh, trying to raise those funds. We've actually raised um, $62,975.86 so far. Um, so since our goal is 125 by July 15th, we've got eight days to raise another about $62,000. You know, I believe that we can do this together. Uh, you as our donors are so incredibly generous and you you have, you have are connected by the heart to our Palestinian friends. Um, so together, I think we can do this. Even though it seems like a big goal in eight days, um, we'll see what happens. So I just ask that each of you would prayerfully consider a gift today um, of, of whatever amount. Um, either join us in one-time gift or monthly gift, that's also helpful. Um, so please do consider that. And this gift that you give will continue to fund precious and world-changing um, leaders in Palestine like Noor and Salah. Um, I also want you to stay tuned. Um, Mahan had mentioned about um, Betty McCollum. We've got a couple of other webinars coming up over the summer. The next one in August will focus on music as a, a, a tool to unlock hope. And, um, and then we're, uh, Betty McCollum has agreed to join us in a webinar. We haven't gotten the date yet. Actually, I think that's going to be early September. Um, so that's going to be a really compelling webinar as well. And then mark your calendars for our, our next virtual uh, gala, which is coming up on September 18th, Saturday at 7 p.m. Central. 
Um, again, I would just want to thank our amazing panelists, Farah, Mohanad, Noor, and Salah. Um, you got, you're all world changers, so thank you, and God bless you all. Um, again, please consider continuing to support Bright Stars and uh, unlocking hope for the next generation of creative leaders in Palestine. Thank you all, and God bless. Take care.